Hey everybody, welcome back to another riveting round of Revit. In this episode, we will be discussing kitchen layout. And what that really just means is we're going to put in all the cabinets and appliances for our kitchen in this cabin. So with that, what we need to do is jump into our main floor view, main floor floor plan there. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the area. This is going to become our kitchen area right here. And there's nothing really wrong with this section view right here, but I'll, I'm just going to drag it off the, out of the way for the moment. And I can always you know, bring it back on as needed. Uh, the other thing that will probably help you a little bit right now is I did add a web page that details the kitchen cabinets and appliances so you know exactly what they are and where they go. Uh, you can have that pulled up on the screen, maybe split side by side with this video while you work on your other screen with Revit. Hopefully that'll help. Uh, but with the video here, getting started, the first thing we're going to be, I'm going to kind of work clockwise around the kitchen area. And if you're looking at that view, uh, A, it starts on the left, and that is the refrigerator. So what I need to do to bring in these items, it's called components, and that is found on the architecture tab component, I should say component, right there. And you've maybe already played around with this some if you're bringing in cars, airplanes, animals, whatever it was when we did some of our demo days. But component tool, and we're going to, you know, you can check your family. If you're, you know, we've been doing this for a little bit, you can check the family, maybe you have something there. I was practicing for a bit before I started this video, so that's why I do have a refrigerator already loaded in my components, but what I would I didn't before, so you're going to go up and click Load Family. And then on the left side here, I should have helped you make a shortcut already to the Autodesk Revit Extras, Cabin Components, and down to Refrigerator. And quick note, anytime you see file names with numbers after them in Revit, don't use them. Those are all backup files. Uh, those are something I can use if needed, usually if we're just recovering like your house plan or something like that. The files like this that have numbers, I go through and try to delete them once in a while because students accidentally save them back in the same location. But So grab the refrigerator with no numbers, double click on it or single click and open. And then that will become your current component that you're working with. And you can click the type selector again because there's different sizes of the refrigerator. I don't know if yours will come in by the default size or not, but we're looking for the 30 by 32. And when I come over here, I'm going to zoom in on my kitchen area and go ahead and place it about where it goes. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, quick note, by the way, another quick note is that these components can be rotated by the space bar. This one happened to be the right orientation, uh, but eventually when we're working on cabinets over here, we're going to have to use the space bar. But refrigerator, about this location, click to place, escape to cancel the tool a few times, and there it is. The only thing that I noticed right away about the refrigerator is it looks rather rectangular-like versus squarish if it was 30 by 32. And if you ever need to double check things on here, one way to do it is up at the very top, there's this little yellow ruler tool. I use this thing all the time. I click on it, and now I can come out here and just pull some quick random dimensions to double check. Okay, that's two foot eight. Yep, that's 32. Okay, so let me check then my front to back distance here to here. And if I zoom in, there I can see it, it's two feet. That's only 24. It's definitely not 30. Now what is a little bit different about refrigerators, some of these, that when you click on them, you can actually, there's an extra line back here. What that kind of means is I think that's, there's two ways I take that. It's either kind of like the cooling fin rack the a refrigerator has in the back, or it's a line to help you align it to the wall because you should be leaving an airspace. Either way, I can measure even to that thing and see what kind of line I, number I get. And there it is, right there. Yeah, still, it's only... 26 inches. So this refrigerator is not deep enough for some reason, even though it has the right name. So to change things, what you do is a single left click on it, highlight it, and just like walls, we go to edit type, 
But luckily, a lot of our work is right here. And sure enough, depth, two feet. Make that 30 inches. Ooh, something. Okay, sorry. Let me try that one more time. Three zero. Three zero inches. Enter. Laptop was acting goofy. There we go. And then the width is at the bottom of this area, right down there, the two foot eight. And you can see there's all kinds of other dimensions. And that's cool. You can tweak, adjust a lot of the stuff. You can change the material. If you don't want a white refrigerator, you could switch it out to stainless steel or black. Feel free. Click OK. There. Fridge is a little more squarish. And then what I'm going to do to get the fridge in the right spot is I'm going to go to the Modify tab. Another tab we use a lot. And Align Tool. And I'm going to click the edge of the sheetrock. Zoom in. Make sure that's this outer edge highlighting and the edge of the refrigerator. And there we go. And feel free to lock that down. Now on the back, the refrigerator, see it should still slide because it's only locked on one side. What you can do here, let's see if that align tool works between the edge of the sheetrock and that, sure enough, that line right there. And what that does is it kind of puts it at the proper depth. Again, refrigerators need a little bit of air space behind them to make the cooling components all work the way they should. And I can escape. I'm done with the mod the align tool for the moment. And now we're ready for B, our first cabinet, which in the list there says it's a casework base cabinet, four door, 18 inch. So let's go back to architecture tab, component. And I just know we got to load it because I haven't loaded it yet. And still says cabin components here, so I'm good. And I'm going to look for key. Okay, here they just say base cabinet. The word casework is gone then. Base cabinet, four drawer. Base cabinet, four drawer, right there. Now it doesn't say 18 inches because when we load it, it's going to have multiple widths. And we'll have to select the one we want. So again, double click it or single click and open. And our type selector should change. Okay, we got lucky it's the right size again, but let me just show you. Base cabinet four drawer comes in a 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So we want 18. Bring that out here. And this is kind of just a 50-50 guess if the front of the cabinet is by the wall or if the front of the cabinet is at the other end of my cursor. But I'm just going to hope it's the right way and snap it right to the edge of the sheetrock and close the refrigerator. I'm going to leave a little gap between the fridge and the cabinet for now. And escape. And sure, why not? It's always good to save. So before I go much further, I kind of want to make sure this cabinet's the right way. So let's do this. Let's set up a 3D view that is always looking at our kitchen cabinets. So if I want to view something, 3D, a good place to look is up top on the ribbon at the View tab. 3D views, I'm going to click the drop arrow and select camera. Now the first click is where I'm standing. You can kind of see the little camera icon. So the first click is where I'm standing. I'm going to kind of set it up back here, kind of by that sliding door. Click once there, and then I'm just going to extend my view just out through the cabin really. Just click anywhere pretty much outside. I'm kind of centered on the kitchen area and click. And there we go. Now it's not perfect yet, but we can take these little blue dots and make this view bigger so we can see everything we're working on. Make that down a little bit further, a little bit more to the right. And this should be a wall right here to make things a little better. We'll go, we'll turn it to fine detail and shaded. And there we go. And it looks a little bit wide. It's just kind of perspective. It's a little bit skewed, but at least we can see everything we're doing now. All right, there's that first cabinet. Sure enough, drawers are facing out. Awesome. That's what I wanted to see. So I'm going to go back to my main floor. Next cabinet, C, is a base cabinet. Single. So this is different, so i got to load it. So architecture tab, component, load family. 
cabin components are still at the top. And now we're looking for a single door and drawer. There it is, right there. Double click it or single click and open. And this time I want a 15 inch, 1.5. So I gotta go over to my type selector, change it, single drawer, 15 inch, come back over here. And now I'm kind of making it align with the previous cabinet and slide it in until I hit the sheetrock and left click to place. Escape to cancel. And then D is a filler. So we're going to have to load that as well. Architecture, component, load family, cabinet components. And this one is a base cabinet filler. Double click or single click and then open and this filler should be three and three eighths wide so by default it's just three inches so I should be able to click right in here and go zero space three space three slash eight enter and then come back over here and again align it with the previous cabinet and then slide back in with the cursor till I hit sheetrock hit escape and that's my filler cabinet. And that's just a very common thing they do in kitchens when you have a couple corners meeting and you know the cabinets just didn't happen to fit perfectly corner to corner. They put in a filler. E. E E E. Single door and drawer. Another 15 inch. So E and C even though they don't look the same in that picture, are the same. Is what we're going with there. So component, and we already have a single drawer, door and drawer, 15 inch. Go back and select it. And here's where we have to hit the space bar one time. And what I'm watching is, I'm kind of up near this cabin, cabinet, and I'm against the sheetrock. There we go. We jump back to my 3D view. Aha, cabinet is backwards. So let me go back to the main floor. Click on it one time. Highlights it. Puts me in modify mode. Anytime something's highlighted, you go automatically to modify mode. There is rotate. So I'm just going to click either straight left, straight right, straight up, straight down, whatever. But just rotate 180. There we go. Escape, click off, go back to 3D view of your kitchen. All right, we got cabinets facing the right way now. Can even zoom in and look a little bit. Looks like I gotta raise that filler in after a bit. Main floor. So what I need to do now though is, well, that's in the wall a little bit, so bring that out. Go to the Modify tab, and this is what we just do a lot. There's a lot of aligning here. Click on the sheetrock, click on the edge of the cabinet, in fact, you can't even lock that so it can't move off of there. Okay, hit escape. And I'm thinking what's going to have to happen is our. We got to modify our filler a little bit. Or we just need to tuck our cabinets tight to the refrigerator. Let's see how that works. Snap it over. So I'm just kind of dragging pass and then come back it'll snap right on that line same thing here still a little bit extra filler there so what I can do is go grab that ruler tool I talked about either right here at the moment or at the very top same tool and I can click here and over and it's two and three quarters instead of three and three eighths so I just highlight that filler one click and change it to 2.75 inches, enter, enter. And I can either drag and have it snap, or I can use the align tool and say this and this belong together. All that little buzzer. Ah, that's not a good idea. Because that just stretches the one side of the filler out. Sorry, sometimes this 
slips my mind. There's a lot of things in Revit. Once in a while, I forget exactly what tool works in what way or what cabinets work in what way. Okay, so I think that is what we want there. So a two and three quarters filler at that point. Two and three quarters. All righty. Little space behind our fridge. Yep. They meet perfectly at the corner. That's what we want. And that's the reality of cabinets. You can't put cabinets back here that you can use. There's no way to access them other than sometimes you get what's called like a lazy Susan or these sliding cabinets now that are pretty slick. They let you utilize more of this space, but very often it's actually unused space there. Okay. Uh, F. Let's move on to F then. Hopefully it fits with this one. Still a little bit worried about the size of this cabinet. But if it's wrong, we'll modify it and just pull everything back. It's pretty easy to fix. F is a double door sink. I know I didn't load that yet, so I'm going to go Architecture tab, Component, Load, and find that double door sink unit. Cabin, base cabinet, double door sink unit. Double click. And one click, turned it, and it was backwards before, so I'm actually going to try a second and a third click. And let's see what happens there. And as I'm just watching it, I'm having it align with that edge. And then I just go back to the, the sheetrock, or the window in this case, and click. Escape. Just need one of those. Oh, I did not check the size. See? even happens to me. Let me single click on it. Got lucky it was 30 inches. If it's not while it's highlighted, you can change it while it's highlighted. I could make it a different size. And I'll put it back. There we go. Let me check my camera view. That's good. Okay, while I'm here, I could fix this filler. Um, I don't see anything about height here, so let me check the type selector. Sure enough, there's height, two feet. We're going to go with 34.5 inches, enter, is what most base cabinets are. There we go. Yep. The other inch and a half to get to three feet is the countertop. Standard counters are 36 inches off the floor. Alrighty, let's back to the main floor. Next cabinet is G, and G is a four drawer, which I did use before, so I can go to architecture component choose my type selector four drawer and I'm looking for an 18 inch again and if you remember it's one two three space bars and then watch alignment from the previous cabinet and then watch for alignment at the wall sheetrock and left click to place escape few times to get rid of the tool and that component. Let's see, we're on G. H. H is a range. So let's go get that. Architecture tab. Component tool. I know I don't have one in the type, so I'm just going to load family. Range. Ooh, good question here. Range, range electric. Just regular range here is what we want. Just the range. And what's nice about this is that double line on the square here is the backsplash, so to speak, or like where the controls might be on this. So three space bars again. Get you in the right spot. Align that cabinet, align the wall. Then left click to place, hit escape. H. Then the last lower cabinet is going to be component again. And we're looking for a single door and drawer 12 inch. You have to scroll up or down, single, yep, 12 inch. One, two, three space bars. Place that in there, escape. And then the last thing is we gotta fill this in. So we have one more filler to put in. And it's not in the picture. So I got a little exclamation point there to help point it out. 
and just to say that it's a filler. So I'm going to go back to component again. Look for that filler tool. There it is. And one, two, three. And I'm going to go ahead and just place it. Because as you saw earlier, when I was trying to fix that other one, when I did the align tool, it just it, um, changed the width on the fly. And that's what these little blue arrows do. So I can actually just grab it and drag it down until it hits the sheetrock and done which happens to be three and a quarter. Um, so that's, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just trying to fill that space. But just modifying it by that way uh, works just fine. I go back to 3D view, zoom back out a little bit. Looks, looks good. And the filler I noticed even came in at the proper height this time, which is nice. And there we go. There's all of our base cabinets for our kitchen. The sink unit. Pretty centered on the window. That's nice. Um, that, that. Tim. Sorry, I'm just. I'm still using the tutorial as I've said before. Going through my notes. All right. So while while we are in 3D view here, we are actually going to change the height of our window a little bit because. You'll see how close the window is down to that cabinet. By the time you put a, a countertop with a backsplash, we're going to be covering this up. So left click on the window one time. And over on the left side, it says sill height of 3 feet. Let's try 4 feet. So 4, enter, enter. Or Enter once for the four, and then just wait like three seconds, and it will automatically apply also. Let's go back to main floor. Zoom back out. And I think that is... looking Now, from this view, nothing changes. Um, what I was a little bit worried about, if you go over four feet, this window disappears. And you got to kind of change your cut height a little bit on the floor plans to, to make it appear again. But four feet works high enough um, we're good I think we're ready for some countertop now so architecture tab component I know I didn't load any just ignore that A little glitch load family we're gonna go countertop L shape with sink because I was just trying the one with the sink and I was having some issues just like anybody else sometimes. So I'm just going to try something different. Let's do L-shape with sync. Because honestly, if this works, it'll save us a step anyway. So I just keep, keep it in space bar until I get the orientation I want. Don't worry that the countertop's not the right length yet. And I'm going to see if I can snap it right in the corner. And sure can. So I can go up and kind of reference one wall, bring it in slowly till it snaps to the other and place it. If it wasn't working, I would just drop it out here and then use that align tool to go up to one wall and then to the other. Okay, good, escape. I'm going to click one time on the countertop. You can see if all, all these little blue arrows mean uh, things that are adjustable. So for example, this blue arrow goes straight up and aligns with the end. So if I grab it, I can slide this over right to the edge of the refrigerator. Looks good. Uh, go over here. You can see that the countertop is into my stove or my range. I'm going to grab that and bring it back to even. Good. And this one here, the sink, looks a little bit on the big side. So here's this one gets a little bit crazy because now you're dealing with modifying a sink and a sink hole. Um, I can't remember right here. Sink location, about three feet. So if I go two, enter, enter, that slides it. I can see how it moved it up. So I'm going to go back and play with that. Two, space, six, enter, enter. Nope. Well, three was really close, actually. So let's go back to like two foot, nine, enter, enter. Two, space, ten, enter, enter. That's looking very close to centered, 210. 
in mind. And what am I looking at? I'm just looking at this extension line going straight in and hitting the, the faucet representation there. And I just need to tweak this. So in hindsight, I would not have adjusted that. There we go. Looks good. I did modify the sink location to 2 foot 10. And then really I just had to extend those two or bring back the two lengths of countertop. Let's look at our 3D view. Hey, looks good. Countertop, sink. Um, we could get into some issues that we might be going into other cabinets right now. But for demo purposes, good start. Uh, sink opening width, yeah, sink location. If you go in here, there might be a place to change the sink size, but for some reason the other countertop file was giving us issues, so for the cabin, countertop with sink will be okay to use right now. Uh, reality is I probably would make the lower cabinet wider and then just make my side cabinets, right, that cabinet there would have to be a little skinnier so it's not inside the sink. All right. And, and with that, now I would go, we're ready to move on and do, oh, no, no, we're not. We still need one more countertop down here. So component, load a family, and we are looking for Q, Q, Q. Q is just a regular old countertop 24 inches deep. Countertop. Probably, I'm going to try this one that just says countertop, no other name to it. Double click. Let's see, yep, 24 inches deep. Space bar, space bar, space bar. Zoom in. Should be up against the stove or the range and click to place. And then all I have to do is click one time on it. Grab the blue arrows and slide it back up to the sheetrock. Yep, it's on the sheetrock layer. Click off. It overhangs just like the other countertop. Go back to 3D view. It's concrete, whatever. So I just click on it. And it's weird that it's previewing this hole, but as long as it looks right in here, I'm okay with it. Um, edit type if you want to change the material. And actually, right there's a countertop material. Double click that and click OK. And click off, switches it right back. A little bit of a gap of mine. We'll go back and fix that, which is odd. It shows that it's fine. So, um, that's not ironed out just yet. Ask me in person if there's something we got to do to fix that. I want to keep the video rolling here, but that's very close. It's kind of just a weird little glitch, just like it actually previews it, it leaves the building, but I'm not sure what somebody did to this file. Okay, moving on. This is already getting pretty long. Uh, we need to do the upper cabinets. So I'm going to switch my tutorial back. There's nothing really different here. A K or J. We're going to go to Component, Architecture tab, Component. We're going to Load. And we're now looking for Wall Cabinet, Double Door. Upper Cabinet, Double Door. And this one will be a 36-inch. So I go to my Type Selector, 36-inch. And you have to be up against a wall for it to snap there. Go ahead and click even with the fridge. And then the next one is a corner unit. So I'm going to load another family. Go to the bottom, upper cabinet, corner unit. Double click that. And that, that's just a little upgrade. The file's a little bit older, but they haven't changed. Okay, so this one, for some reason, seems to be just a little bit off, so let me place it. And it aligned on one wall, so one wall, the other wall is a little bit off, so I'm just going to drag it. If I can get it to snap manually, 
that's good. Or just go back up and get our modify, or our, sorry, align tool. Click our reference, what we want to move, lock it. There we go. And then we're also going to align. This is an upper cabinet, and so is this. Align those two lines. Ooh, control Z. Something there did not move the way I wanted. So reference what I want to move. There we go. And then we're a little bit into our fridge, which is just a little odd. Thirty-three. That's an easy way to fix that. Works for me. Not sure where the little glitch is coming in. If something got moved accidentally or what here. Or if our corner, corner cabinet somehow got modified in size a little bit. So what I'll do is just realign. I want this to be my reference. There we go for now. That works. Anyway, sometimes this happens a little bit. I'm not sure. I think when students are working with this, they somehow save these files back, and sometimes a little bit off on its size. It's not super critical to me at the moment. I'm more worried that people know how to put in these things than I am the exact components. Other than, you know, if you put something in, you realize it can't fit, modify it, and you know, make it so it can. Uh, I didn't want, you know, you can't have a cabinet inside the fridge, so I just made it the one size smaller, and that works for the moment. We're good in that corner, and then we just have L and M left, which are a pair of 24 inch cabinets. So if I go up to architecture, component, it's a wall cabinet, double door, 24 inch, sorry, a little bit slower, wall cabinet, or upper cabinet, double door, 24 inch. And along this wall, which doesn't even really want to play nice at the moment, so I'm just going to snap, and okay, there it kicked out, and then I'll do it one more time down here. Not even worried about the alignment. Uh, what we're going to do is put, we're going to put it down all the way in the corner. So I'm going to go to Modify tab. Align. I'm going to pick the sheetrock as my reference, and I want this cabinet to slide down, lock it. And then this end of the cabinet is a reference, and I want this end to slide down and lock it. Just to keep the space around the window nice and open is really what we're after. 3D view. And there we go. We got some space on each side of the window. The angle just makes it look smaller, but there's about the same on both sides. And the kitchen cabinets are in with countertop. Yeah, we got a little glitch here. We got to find a countertop that has a backsplash. So hopefully I don't have to remake this whole video just for that. Um, you can ask me. Hopefully I'll have a better name for it to use. It's probably just one that's right in there. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.